So we're going to just briefly chat about um, the benefits of reading to children and what a living book is and um, why literature-based learning is so effective. You want to get going, Shirley? Uh, yes, well, the first thing that comes to mind is um, a quote that says that, if I can remember it correctly, a house without books is like a room without windows. And really, a, a book is a window into another world. It takes our children into other places and other times and gives them insight into the lives of other people. And so it's a wonderful tool to use for learning. And children love stories and moms love reading stories. So it's actually an easy, stress-free way to help children learn. Okay. And of course, when you're reading, you are spending time with your children. And for many children, time is it's their love language. It's what fills their love tank up. Mommy spent time cuddling with me, touching me, reading to me, talking to me. And that's an important aspect of, of home education, that we're building this relationship with our children. Correct. You know, one of the questions that we often get asked is, do we need to get a grammar program um, for our children, particularly in the um, primary school years? And while Footprints does offer a optional grammar program, it's not of these in, you know, the intensity that you get in something like Winston Grammar. And the reason why is because if you're reading good literature to your children, they naturally pick up good writing skills and good um, speaking skills. Do they want to always write? Not necessarily, particularly boys. I know that um, you've got a couple of boys and I have my two. And both of them were not um, avid writers. But when they needed to, for any purpose, the grammar, the, the, the language flow was pretty much there. And I think that that is one of the benefits that come from reading good quality literature. Charlotte Mason talks about um, the principle of what twaddle is. Um, and while it is a badly written book, um, and we come across plenty of those in our, our years of research, there is also a... Um, in a, in a book that is it would be classified as twaddle, there is a lack of um, mature thought in it. Um, I think to one of our books in Little Footprints, um, they, it's a very simple story, it's rhyme based, but there is a depth of thought that comes in it, a family going out shopping together, um, a lot of the stuff because obviously it's Little Footprints, so that's up to eight years of age, the kids have to pick up through the pictures um, and that goes back to what you were saying about a, a house with a room without windows, is that these stories give us an ability to look into another era, another person's life and experience, and then draw from it how we would respond in that experience, in that life, or with that challenge. Absolutely. Um, another thing I want to mention is that um, Research has shown that the two most important ingredients for academic success later in life, in children's lives, is excessive quantities of literature. And there's a quote I always like to bear in mind from Andrew Padua, who's from the Institute of Excellence in Writing. He says that for what children need to express themselves well is a large database, a, a child, or let's say a child, a large database in his brain of reliably correct and sophisticated language patterns. So what he's saying is that if we want our children to be good communicators later in life, we've got to program that data into them from when they are, they are a young age. And so by reading aloud to our children, we are reading um, good examples of written language to them. It's got good vocabulary, it's got good grammar construction, and all of this is being modeled for the child and it programs them to be good communicators at a later age. And it also helps our children to learn to be discerning. If we've always read them good quality literature, when they come across twaddle, they're able to pick up immediately, this isn't a good story. So it's, it's a good tool for teaching those skills. Absolutely, and the other thing is that, I'm gonna read this quote because it's quite long. Um, Charlotte Mason says, children should have the joy of living in far lands in other persons, in other times, a delightful double existence. And she carries on, but I, I just had a flashback to when my now 24 year old was a little girl and we were busy with American um, history and the pioneers and, um, and the Mayflower landing um, on 
the American coast and the one day I walked outside after cooking and there they were dressed up, the three little ones, so they must have been about seven, five and three, dressed up in these elaborate costumes with these umbrellas sitting in those clam shells you know, that we used to have sand and water in for our toddlers. And that was the Mayflower and they were on their way to, to land on the coast. And that's what it does. It stimulates the, the imagination. It stimulates the ability to tell their own stories. Um, and, and we all love to see our kids play these things out because it means that stuff's going in, which is always one of the questions that moms have. Um, and it just, it's just fuel for the brain. Um, Charlotte Mason talks about the, the, that the brain feeds on ideas the same way that the body will feed on food. So what better way to get ideas into our children's heads than by reading high class quality literature. And the other thing that it does is that it connects children with the masters of the past, the masters of literature and art. And Charlotte Mason encourages us to expose them to good music too. And what's been lovely to see with hindsight is that as my children have grown older, what was interesting to see is how my eldest child made an effort to go and see places overseas in Europe that we had read about and sent me photos of paintings we'd read about in stories about artists and went to museums specifically to see people or the work of people we'd read about. And that shows me that the stories that we read made an impact. And, and that's just rewarding as, as a homeschooling parent to see that it was significant to the child and affected something they've done even as an adult. The last thing I thought that we'd quickly touch on, which um, I think is, is so valuable, we have a couple of books in all the programs that deal with really tough issues. Whether it be um, the the murder of Steve Biko, or whether it be the death of a mother because of AIDS, or whether it be um, the the shooting of um, the Koi herdsman by the Portuguese, those are tough situations, and you wouldn't naturally just driving in the car, you know, you're taking your child to tennis, start talking about the death of someone from AIDS. So these books facilitate discussion around really tough topics. And it does it in a way that um, you can show empathy, you can um, encourage correct responses and reactions. Um, and I think that's another thing that it allows us to navigate through tough situations that we might not necessarily learn in the real world. So that somewhere along the line, if they get bumped by a situation like that, they can draw from from that character lesson as well.